In this video, we're going to talk about the parent-child relationship between widgets, and then we're going to move on to using pointers instead of just objects that are allocated on the stack. So um, first, uh, one thing that, let's talk about where we left off. So we have a basic Qt application. We made an app, a Q application that executes. We uh, created a Q widget, which is going to be the big um, window where all the other widgets reside inside of. And then we have one, two buttons, and a line edit. Let's look at what we have so far. All right, while I have this up, let's talk about parent-child relationship. There's two types of parent-child relationship we'll be talking about in these videos. One you're already familiar with, which is um, the parent-child relationship in classes. So you can have a parent class and a child class where you have inheritance going on. Um, uh, a different type of relation, parent-child relationship is widgets. So in this window right here, this whole window is a widget. And these other smaller widgets, the buttons and the text line edit that are inside of it, are said to be its child widgets. All right? So in this case, the parent widget is the widget, and the child widgets are the buttons and the line edit. So just because these widgets are children of the window does not mean that the wid um, that one class necessarily inherits from the other. In this case it turns out that they do um, but that doesn't, isn't necessarily going to be the case. So I want you to be aware that I'm going to use talk about parent-child relationships in two ways. Um, that uh, the cla one class inherits from the other. There's a parent class and a child class and then that one widget can be the child of another. In this case, the, the button is the child of the bigger widget. And the reason that the button is the child is because it's actually physically located inside the bigger widget. All right. So uh, as you have seen, uh, when we send a widget as an argument to one of these functions, like add widget, um, and we give it button one or button two or line edit, we can't just give it the object name. We have to give it the address or a pointer to that object. In general, Qt library makes it much easier to deal with uh, pointers rather than just straight objects. So we're going to transition into using pointers rather than uh, just using objects like this. So let's change this stuff over. So we're going to make this widget using a pointer all right we can't use the dot operator anymore we need to use the arrow operator if we dealing with pointers and I'm going to change it for all of our widgets that we have the buttons and all the others Okay, so now oh, I'm going to do the layout also. Now when I pass um, these variables into these functions, like add widget button1, um, button1 is now a pointer, so we don't have to have, the, or we shouldn't have the ampersand sign anymore. And also, we need to change all of these to the arrow operator. All right, so now I've completely transitioned over to using um, pointers for, for the widgets instead of um, using like just regular objects. The, our queue application is still a regular object, um, but our the widget we're going to let's call it, give this a different name since it's functioning as our window let's call it window and then we have to do that down here too okay 
So we made our window, which is a new widget. And we added, we made a button one, button two, a line edit, and then we added them all to a layout. And then we added that, set that layout for the, for the window. And let's see if it runs the way we expect it to. Oh, we need to make that a Q widget, not just a widget. And we need to change this name to window. Okay. I just changed the name um, to window to make it a little clearer what the purpose of that widget is. So here we have it. So we have our original uh, GUI that we started off with in this video, but everything is done using pointers instead of regular variables. And again, the reason that we did that is because most of the Qt functions like add widget, set layout, and things like that ask for a pointer rather than uh, just a regular object. So it's easier to deal with this way. Um, what am I doing wrong in this program here? There's, since I'm using pointers now, there's something else that I have to be uh, totally aware of. All right, um, I've not deleted any of my variables that I've created using the new keyword. So um, in, in this simple program, uh, we get to the end of the function pretty quickly after they're used, and so they'll be deleted automatically, but we don't want to rely on that. Usually, we want to use the delete keywords to get rid of the um, all of the dynamic variables that we've made here. So how do we do that? Well, we want to delete them after the program is over, after the app has executed. Okay, so there we've deleted all of these, but there's another problem. All right, we, we've deleted them after the app has executed, but we've also deleted them after the return statement. That means that this function is already over and these will never get executed. So what I'm going to do is change this return statement around a little bit. Let's, whatever app exec returns, let's store that in a variable. And then we'll return that at the end. Okay, so um, the things that I changed around is I actually deleted all the dynamic variables, and I forgot one. This is why using dynamic variables can be a little dangerous. So our layout, you need to delete that too. All right. And uh, we also made it so app exec puts its return code in a variable rather than returning it directly, and then we return it at the end. That way these statements will actually get executed. Um, there's one other thing to talk about before we move on from here. So we've um, been good programmers and we've deleted all our dynamic variables that we've made. But um, there's one thing that you should know about the Qt library and the way that it handles dynamic variables. Remember that button 1, button 2, and line edit, they're children, child widgets of the layout. And layout is a child widget of the window. So Whenever we make one object a child of the, or one um, widget a child of the other, um, when the parent widget is deleted, it will automatically delete its children. Okay, so when if window gets deleted, it has children, right? It has the layout as a child, so it'll automatically delete the layout. When the layout gets deleted, it'll automatically delete button one, button two, and line edit. So actually, we only need to have this delete statement for the window itself. All right, so that's it for this video. I just wanted to show um, transitioning over to using pointers instead of regular variables. And, um, uh, and, and take a look at how um, the parent-child relationship is between 
um, widgets. That's different from a parent-child relationship between classes. And also see how the Qt library handles cleanup of dynamic variables.